hello again. My name is Tina McDermott. I call myself the lazy inspirational chef. I'm a speaker and I'm a weight loss coach. I, my goal is to help as many people as possible find joy in the kitchen, even if they don't know how to cook or like to cook. So you can live a life that is full of health, full of vibrancy and free from everything that you don't want, like dis-ease or diets or any of that fun stuff. I've been doing this for 20 plus years and there's no place that I'd rather be than right here, right now in my kitchen teaching you. All right. So if this is your first time with me, type a one in the chat. Oh, yeah, type a one in the chat if it's your first time with me. If it's your first time with me, type a one in the chat. Good. And if you are cooking along with me, I want to know who is cooking along with me. If you are cooking along with me, put cooking. If you are watching, perfectly fine. Either way, put watching in the chat so I know who's who's watching, who's cooking. I have some shows I do on a monthly basis and people are, have been like to all of my shows. So I just wanted to know. So a lot of you are watching, 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 watching. Nobody cooking, nobody cooking. All right, so let's go a little bit of housekeeping. If the internet goes out, don't worry, I'll be right back, right? Anything I say is not medical advice. Talk to a doctor afterwards. Every time I say this, nothing happens. We're all good. All right, the last piece of housekeeping, the last piece, I'm all about joy, right? I'm all about joy. And when we multitask, it's scientifically proven that we literally experience less joy. So I've got a favor to ask of everybody. My phone's way over there and it's on do not disturb. I'm gonna ask you to grab your phones, put them on do not disturb. Airplane mode, do not disturb so that you're not watching me and multitasking. Close out of all your browsers and be with me 100%. And I promise you, you will experience so much joy during our time together in our in our cooking class. So if you are in to be with me 100% type I'm in in that chat box type I'm in in that chat box type I'm in in that chat box. If you're in to be with me 100% type I'm in in that chat box. Okay, let's see how many people do we have in here. We have essentially eight people I need at least four I'm in. All right, we got six. Yes, we are ready to go. Let me tell you what we're going to make today. First of all, the month of October is cancer awareness, breast cancer, specifically breast cancer awareness month. And uh, just so you all know, a little bit of background on me. On the 17th of October, it's been 10 years since we, um, since my sister Anna, who had breast cancer for 24 some years, passed away. And so we celebrated her life with family this past weekend. And I know a lot about breast cancer and I know a lot about how to help people prevent it and to begin with. And that's why we are making cancer fighting soup. Cancer fighting soup, we are going to make that. We're gonna make it together. And then we all need treats in our lives. We all need treats in our lives. So I'm going to make pumpkin delight cookies. I actually made a batch earlier. You see them over there? Pumpkin delight cookies. I'm gonna teach you all about pumpkin delight. All right, if you guys are ready to start making some soup, put go in the chat. If you guys are ready to start making some soup, put go in the chat. So I have the permission to get going. All right, yes, one person told me to go, so I am going to go. Fantastic. Go, but still watching. It's okay, Crystal, I'm sure you're still just watching. All right, we're gonna start uh, with soup. I'll make the cookies later, okay? We're gonna start with soup and the soup always starts, any soup you're making should always start with a trilogy, with the trilogy. Who knows what the trilogy is? If you know what the trilogy is for soup making, let me know, put exactly what the trilogy is. Actually, let me just tell you, it's the, your basics, the onions, the celery, the carrots, onion, celery, carrots. Well, I'm going to make it a quadruple. I don't know. How do you say trilogy quadruply? I don't know, but we're going to add some garlic. We're going to add some garlic to it too, because Italians love garlic. Yes, I know. I have a, 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 an Irish last name, but I'm very Italian. My parents are off the boat Italian. Onions, garlic, carrots. Oh, wait a minute. It's actually onions, carrots, celery is the trilogy, but we're making a, a four thing with celery. Okay. So add celery to all of that crystal. Now we're going to start with the onion, right? I always like to start with the onion because <clears throat> it's one of the harder vegetables and also gives a lot of flavor, right? Who wants to learn how to cut an onion without crying? If you want to learn how to cut an onion without crying, type cry in the chat. Otherwise, I'm going to skip this step. Cry in the chat if you want. Mm. <clears throat> All right. 
I am not promising that you're not going to cry. I don't cry probably because I wear contacts, but I learned some tricks to prevent the crying because we want to prevent the crying, right? So what we want to do is cut out the bulb. I'm going to get a different knife here. I'm going to get a, 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 a tipped uh, paring knife. So this is the part that goes into the ground. They grew like so, right? And this bulb, they say, makes you cry. And we don't want to cry, right? So we're going to cut that bulb out and we're going to cut it on a diagonal with our paring knife. So watch your beautiful fingers. Don't hold it like this and then try to pair it because then you could slice your hand, okay? So you're gonna hold all your fingers together like so and put your onion down and go in at a diagonal. Of course, the blade away from you and you're going to <clears throat> grip that and this must be a fresher onion because it's a little tough to get in there. And at a diagonal, Remember, move that hand out of the way from the blade, okay? And this is the piece they say makes you cry. So we're going to dispose of it. Who knows what I, where I disposed of it? Who knows where I put my vegetable rubbish? Who knows what I'm putting my vegetable rubbish in? Anybody? Anybody have any ideas where I'm putting my vegetable rubbish? You know, I cut out the wrong side. You know, that's why it was so difficult. I cut out the top, not the bottom. I was being silly willy and not paying attention because I'm teaching the class. That's the bulb. Ah, that's okay. I cut it out. That's what you need to do. Compost bin, yes. Always compost your vegetable scraps because Mother Earth knows what to do with them as opposed to putting them in the landfill. So of course we're just tearing off all of the paper thin outer layer, okay? And we're gonna throw that where? In the compost, give it back to Mother Earth. Round things, you need to make them flat so that you don't cut yourself. Hold your knife like so, one thumb on one side, index finger on the other, the other three fingers are gripping. If you hold your knife like this, stop it because you will hurt yourself. Look how easy that that can slide out. Hold here, hold here, hold here like so, grip, okay? Round things, make them flat. Onions have a lot of layers and it slips around a lot when you cut them. A lot of people cut their fingers when they cut onions. So we want to save our gorgeous fingers. So we're not gonna cut all the way through. We're going to score the onion. We're gonna score the onion, not cutting all the way through. At this point, let me turn uh, my little induction little oven on. And give me a second. I'm gonna put some olive oil in there. All good Italians have olive oil, even if you are whatever nationality you are, have some good old olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. So we're gonna start with some olive oil and in the oil, I'm gonna divert from the onion for just a moment. I want you to put a little bit of crushed red pepper and, or it's, it's actually, yeah, it's just red pepper flakes, right? Red pepper flakes, put some of those because it pops the flavor. My dad takes the red pepper and he grinds them for me in a, in a dedicated coffee grinder. I'm not going to put them in now because it will make me cough and then our cooking class will be over before it began. Um, but this is, you wanna put it in the oil because the oil, because it's dried, will revive it. Any kind of um, spices that are dried, herbs that are dried go in in the oil, okay? Back to the onion. We'll do the other spices in just a moment. Okay, because I want the oil to get a little hot. You see how it didn't slip around? You see how it didn't slip around on me? Okay, and I gripped my fingers so that my fingers don't get cut. That piece that didn't get scored, just make it flat. Round things, make them flat. It is not worth losing your fingers over. Now, the next thing I want to teach you, never scrape up using your knife or even the back of your knife. It dulls the blade or it cuts you, and we cannot have that. Whoops, it's a little too hot. These induction burners, I prefer gas versus electric or induction, but my gas stove is over there, and I don't want my back to you. Who likes gas versus electric versus induction? What do you like? Put it in the chat. Let me see it. Put it in the chat. Are you gas? Are you electric? Are you induction? What do you prefer? Yeah, I'd love to see if I can get a gas burner all the way over here on my island, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's gonna happen. Not in this house, although I love this house. I designed this kitchen myself, come to think of it. Okay, here we go. So now 
Wooden spoon, always use a wooden, I love my wooden spoons. I think I have 20 of them. Wooden spoon, now we're gonna put in our herbs. Dried herbs go in in the oil. The oil will revive the herbs. You're gonna put half a teaspoon, teaspoon, whatever you are inspired to put in there. That was oregano, this is some parsley. I didn't find any really nice parsley at the store, so I've got some nice organic parsley in the jar that I'm putting in. What do we do? Basil, oh, that was basil. So this is my oregano. My mom hates oregano. She never cooks with oregano. I love oregano. So I will generously throw in maybe a heaping teaspoon of some oregano. My mom's off the boat Italian. We never grew up with to measuring spoons or measuring cups or any of that. Everything was a handful or a pinch of this or a pinch of that. Everything, everything, everything. That's just the way we cook. And I do use measuring, measuring stuff occasionally. So my mom has a friend who has a farm and he grows garlic. Oh, I love fresh garlic. Fresh garlic is the bomb, is the bomb. Now, I will not say anything to you. If you use jarred garlic or powdered garlic, it's all the flavor. You'll get the flavor from it. But there's something that's missing from the, from the, the jarred or the powdered garlic. Can anyone guess what is it that is missing from the jarred garlic or the powdered garlic? Anything missing? Anybody understand what that is? Yeah, gas. Some people love induction. Good th I'm a gas girl all the way. I grew up with gas. Um, but yeah, so what's missing from the garlic when you have it that it's processed in a jar or powdered? What you're missing is the the immune boosting properties. Garlic is antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. Garlic is amazing. And much, everything we need is right there in mother, mother Nature. We just have to remember to go and get it from Mother Nature. When they process it and they put high heat on it, the, the immune boosting properties are gone in the wind or gone in the heat, I should say, gone in the heat. Let's see, that's one, two, that's three nice big pieces of garlic. Now, yes, we're gonna cook the garlic, but it's not gonna be at 800 or a couple thousand degrees or whatever, I'm exaggerating, but it's going to be at 200 to 300 degrees, nothing crazy. And that's not good. It's gonna destroy maybe a little bit, but not completely, okay? So we're just gonna chop up our garlic roughly. It's okay if you get a spoonful of garlic when it's cooked. You just don't wanna get a spoonful of garlic when it is raw, okay? Yeah, so, so you're gonna get immune boosting properties when you eat it raw or you get it from fresh, when you get it from fresh and cook with it, okay? Now, back to the trilogy, back to the trilogy as, this is so funny. Yeah, spent the weekend with my sister and we cook a lot together, we cook a lot, but she cooks very different than I do. I'm very lazy and very shortcutty and it drives her insane, especially when I bake. And I'm just getting rid of some of the pieces of the carrot that are a little old. And I washed them, I scrubbed them, but there were still some pieces I didn't like. And she will cut everything up the day before and everything is exactly the same size. And then the next day make whatever it was. She's, she was making roasted carrots, onions, and fennel. And the night before she had to cut everything up and get it all ready before the next day that we were, um, she was roasting it. And for me, I'm like, everything was the same exact size. I can't stand it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's just too much for me. I've got too much laziness going on or, you know, it's, it's like, I'm hungry. I don't have time for that. I just don't have time for that. Don't have time. And it's not even that. Okay. Let me say it this way. I have time. I don't want to waste it cutting everything up to the same exact size. Although, you know, I try my best sometimes, but I really don't have to be precise with stuff. I really don't. I don't want to. I don't need to. And there you have it. Okay. What I did with the carrot and I didn't talk to you about, let me chop these pieces off on the ends, is remember I said round things need to be flat, right? Round things flat because otherwise you could hurt yourself and it, this knife can slip. So we're going to cut our carrot at least in half. This is a thinner carrot. So we're gonna cut it at least in half so it doesn't roll around on us and make them flat. So now that it's flat, even them all out 
and grip your fingers as much as you want to do like so. And sometimes I catch myself doing that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Grip your fingers so that they're absolutely out of the way. I have to learn knife skills because way too many times I scream and for my husband, honey, and he knows exactly what happened that I cut my finger or something. And now I do not even entertain cutting my fingers because I know how to hold a knife and I know how to chop. I know how to hold a knife. I know how to chop. My fingers are out of the way. And, and the other thing is awareness, awareness that your fingers are near a knife. Don't be like, I got a little ADD, right? Don't be a space cadet when you're cooking. Be present, be present and enjoy the process of cooking. So remember I said I'm lazy, right? Here's my celery, I've got a celery heart. I opened this up and I washed, the, I washed it really good. And this is what I'm gonna do, you ready? I'm not even gonna separate them. And do I want all of that? Maybe not. There we go. I'll save this for another batch, another time. So basically there's our trilogy. How do you say four? Is it, if it's not a trilogy, how would you say it? A Caitlin, look that up for me. If it's four, is it a, is it a four series? I don't know. I'm, I'm getting a, a ahead of myself here. So here we go. We've got all four of those items in here, onions, garlic, carrots, celery, and our fresh herbs. If you wanna throw a little sea salt in here, go ahead and do it now. I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon of some sea salt. I only do a half a teaspoon because you can always add salt, but you can't take it away. And I like soup with finishing salt, a little bit of salt at the very end. So that's where I like my salt. Now, what is next? What other hard vegetable do I want to put in my soup? Pardon me if you hear my dog barking. He's being a butt. Or, no, you know, he's protecting me. Let me say it that way. He's protecting the household because this is his household. Talk about anti-cancer. All vegetables are anti-cancer, all of them, because they feed your cells. They feed your cells. And there's no sugar to feed the bad bacteria or the bad cells because cancer cells feed on sugar, right? Now, there, are there carbohydrates in vegetables? Absolutely, but there's no sugar, okay? Now, kale is one of those vegetables that is very, very, very nutritious for your brain and for all of your cells. The stems, however, are a little hard to put in the soup when we're doing, when we're making the, um, once we got all the liquid in there. So what I'm gonna do is strip the stems and put them in there with the onions and the, the trilogy, okay? We're gonna put them in there with the trilogy. Let me do this right. We're gonna lay these leaves one on top of the other so that I can cut them later for you. Who loves kale? Put kale in the chat if you love kale. Put kale in the chat if you love kale. Yeah, we're gonna cut the leaves later. Okay, right now I just want the stems. Put kale in the chat, yeah. Tetralogy from Greek, oh my gosh, four. Caitlin, quadrology, quadra. Okay, I can't read it all, Caitlin. Speak to me. It's, it's, it's a tetralogy. Also, you can do quadrilogy. Oh, I like quadrilogy. Like, that makes, I can say quadrilogy. Okay. <laughs> it's a quadrilogy. Thank you, dear. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so here are my stems. I only had a couple of pieces of kale left over from another recipe. So, but I wanted to show you, first of all, purple vegetables have a compound in them called anthrocyanidins that are free radical busters and free radicals are what could possibly uh, contribute to causing cancer cells, could, okay? And you, like I said, put these in with the onions. They need to cook a little bit longer because they're tougher. Oh, and I wanted to show you something else. I was in the backyard walking my dog because he hurt his knee and I had to walk, his, walk him in the backyard. And in my grass, my garden's all the way over here and in my grass all the way over here because my husband hasn't cut the grass, I found some kale from my garden in my grass over here. We don't put any chemicals in our, in our backyard at all. So this is very good to eat. And this is actually a Russian kale that I plant 
and it comes up beautiful in the winter, some Russian kale. So purple vegetables, and talking about purple vegetables, I have this wonderful um, cabbage that I had from another recipe. And as I'm pulling out vegetables from the fridge, I'm like, oh, gotta put some more purple, some more purple. So I already have some pieces. I don't like that piece, I'll throw that away. And I'm going to cut these up and we're gonna throw some cabbage into our soup. You're gonna put in your soup all of the vegetables that you have in your fridge. And the darker, the greener, the leafier the vegetable, the better it is for you. The dark, dark green vegetables, dark, dark green leafy vegetables are amazing for anti-cancer. So since cabbage is a little on the hard side, I'm gonna to continue to just put harder vegetables in. There we go. You just stir it as you go along, stir it as you go along, okay? Who here has made soup in the past and who here has never made soup and is interested in doing it and making soup? Go ahead and put that in the chat. I wanna see it. If you've made soup in the past or like this is old hat to you, this is new hat to you, what is it? Let me see. You love making soup, good. Now, when I was talking to Caitlin before the, sh the, before the show, yes, I love soup. She loves making soup in the crock pot, which is, I love the crock pot. The crock pot is amazing until I discovered the Instant Pot. Typically I would make this in the Instant Pot, but I'm learning to use my induction burner with my cast iron pan. And I like the flavor in the pan, just a smidgen better than the Instant Pot, just a smidgen, nothing terrible. And, but the difference between the crock pot and the Instant Pot, in the Instant Pot, you can saute all the vegetables ahead of time, which give it flavor and then, most, inst well, the Instant Pot, that brand, can go right into a crock pot mode. So you can fix it in the morning and then it'll be ready by the time you come home. Or you come home after work and you're tired, you only have a certain amount of time to cook and you wanna go for a walk. You can do all of this, cook it in Instant Pot pressure cook mode and um, it'll be done by the time you get home from the walk because vegetable soup only needs probably like 15 minutes to cook. If you had a little meat in there, up to 20 minutes, if you're gonna do meat. We're making a vegetarian soup and I'm probably gonna put lentils in this soup. Oh, broccoli. What I did is I just caught up a bunch of broccoli and broccoli is anti-cancer number one, okay? Eat, eat broccoli, it's great for the brain, great for um, the cells, okay? Now we've got all of the harder vegetables in there. It's almost time for the liquid, but <clears throat> what I decided to do Remember I told you that we went to that Italian store up in New Jersey and we got all of our birthday gifts. I got some lentils. Yes, you can get lentils wherever you want. I just decided to get it from this particular Italian store because I really wanted lentil soup. Lentil soup is the epitome of autumn for me personally. And what I did with the lentils is I soaked them for a couple of hours and just a little baking soda. And that helps to make them more digestible. Make some more, what would make them even more digestible is I rinsed, I, took, I strained the water out. If I just let them sit overnight and rinse them twice, three times a day for the next two days and let them sprout. And if I did that, then it would neutralize a lot of the phytates that are in any kind of bean and makes the nutrition much more available, high density nutrition. And it's just easier to digest and more nutrition for you. I didn't have time for that. So we're going to put, this is only one cup of beans or lentils, I should say. I'm gonna put the lentils right in the soup. And we're not done with vegetables. Let's see what will fit in here. The more vegetables, the better. The more vegetables, the better, right? chock full of vegetables. I tried to make those broccoli pieces to fit in a spoon. Maybe some are bigger than the other, but you know, I'm lazy. I'm not caring too much. Now, in, if I didn't put the lentils in, I would have put these potatoes in there. Okay, I've got these beautiful little baby potatoes, but I already have a starch. I already have lentils, so I'm not gonna do the baby potatoes. I'll save those for roasting. Next, it's getting a little, it's time. You can tell, you can, it starts to get a little sticky and that's when it's time to put in some liquid. That's when it's time to put in some liquid. What I'm gonna do, look, you can get some fresh tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes, perfectly fine. I love these little cherub tomatoes. I eat them like candy. I just walk by and I pop them in my mouth. They're amazing, especially when I don't have time to eat. 
I'll have some cherry tomatoes. Uh, my mom cans tomatoes, I can use those, but let me show you. Organic diced tomatoes. Why organic? Because I'm sure not to get any pesticides. B, the organic cans are BPA free. Does anybody know what BPA is? Most people in the world these days know what BPA is. And that's a plastic that they line the inside of most cans. And BPA is a known cancer causer. It's a known estrogen disruptor. And we cannot have any kind of estrogen disruptors, especially when it comes to breast cancer. So will you make sure you get organic cans or the can should say BPA free. You don't want the BPA, okay? So I also, I love my Pampered Chef little can opener because the lid doesn't fall into the food. You don't like the lid to fall into the food. You don't know where this lid has been. You have no clue where it's been. So, you know, who washes the top of their cans? All right, butternut squash soup is the cat's, the cat's meow, is it the cat's meow? It's the cat's uh, pajamas. I make, I like making caldo. What is caldo, Crystal? Caldo means hot in Italian, but what do you mean by that? Okay, so I'm gonna put the tomatoes in. Time for the tomatoes. Now, oh, Mexican soup, okay, got it. Now, my mom taught me this always. You never let some any of that tomatoes stay in the can or the jar. You always put a little water and rinse it out. To recycle, you need to rinse it out anyway. So there we have it. Now, what is next in our soup? We are doing, oh, broth. Okay, I'm going to do a vegetable broth today. I am not against eating meat. I love eating meat. And sometimes we want something that's a little bit more um, easy to digest. If you're having any kind of digestive issues, if you are experience any, experiencing any kind of dis-ease, it's best to go the more vegetables, the better, even vegetable broth. When we choose our vegetable broth, I want you to make sure that it is organic, okay? Why do we want vegetable broth organic? When it's organic, we are 100% positive that there is no MSG in the stock. Stocks and as well as seasonings, as well as uh, mixed seasonings, are known to have MSG in it. MSG is an excitotoxin, passes the blood brain barrier and excites your brain cells until they die. I lost enough brain cells to Lyme disease, don't need to lose any more, and neither do you, okay? So we wanna stay as dis-ease-free dis as possible, so make sure you're organic. If you wanna have a little bit of animal protein perfectly fine. I highly recommend if you're 45 plus to do bone broth because it's full of collagen that is good for your connective tissues. It's good for your skin. It's also good for your digestive system. It's good for your gut. Okay. And so here we go. We're going to put our, it's about four cups or this whole hermetically sealed package. If you're going to do stock I, or um, the, the bouillon cubes, please make sure your bouillon cubes are organic. Otherwise they do, most of them have MSG. MSG is hidden under many different words, like the word spices, natural flavors, autolyzed yeast extract. Oh, that's fine, you think, but it's not. It's not. So be careful, okay? Be careful. And all right, we're not done. We have a couple more vegetables that we have a little bit of room for. Oh, I want to back up real quick. I almost forgot to tell you about something that I discovered recently. If you didn't want to do lentils and you want to try a different kind of grain, something I discovered from Africa called fonio. Has anyone ever heard of fonio before? It's an ancient grain grown in Africa that apparently Americans are more on the up and up about and in learning about. This is the first I've heard of it. And it's a teeny, 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 tiny grain, smaller than teff. Teff is also another African, African grain or Ethiopian grain. That's very small, but the fonio is even smaller. I haven't opened the package, so I don't want to open it. But it's called fonio, full of protein and good for you stuff, but it's still some carbohydrates. So if I didn't want to do, and it cooks up like couscous in a couple of minutes with hot water, I could have put fonio in here if I wanted to try that out. So I wanted to introduce that to you. Has anyone heard of fonio? Put fonio in the chat if you have. Mexican soup is caldo. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, if you want to put chicken in here, by all means, throw the chicken in perfectly fine. I'm just trying to do a full out vegetarian chicken, I mean, vegetarian soup today. Now it's time for the softer vegetables. It's time for the softer vegetables. And I'm going to put some zucchini in there. I'm going to put some zucchini. And remember round things. What do we do with round things? What do we do with round things? Put it in the chat. What do we do with round things? What do we do with round things? We make them flat. I'm going to score it because this is a larger one. I like to get smaller zucchini. There were three in a pack. There were two smaller ones and one larger one. So we'll do the larger one. Round things we make flat. We round things we make flat. Put flat in the chat if you are still with me. Flat in the chat if you are still with me. Flat, flat, flat. There we go. Now, I have a problem. You know what no, my problem is? I make too much food. I make way too much food. And normally when I make soup, I make a huge pot of soup, huge, 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 and use up all my vegetables. And then I have all this extra soup. It goes from the freezer, goes to my sister. My nieces moved a little further away now, so they're not readily available to come and pick up food. I have certain neighbors that I call that I have food. And what I'm finding, I'm like, oh, I'm dealing with so much food after these cooking classes. So I am forcing myself to use the induction burner with a smaller pot, with a smaller pot. So I cook less food, cook a little bit less. Okay, now I'm going to put the kale in there. If I was going to do spinach, I won't put spinach in until it's done cooking. I wouldn't put spinach in until it's done cooking. By the way, if you want to put black pepper, put some black pepper. I don't want to put it on because it might make me cough and we just can't have that. Um, but black pepper, freshly grind your black pepper. The, the flavor profile is really amazing. When I serve the soup, I'll put a little extra salt and a little pepper on the top and serve it with some fresh parsley and Parmesan cheese. Parsley is really good to help detox the liver, okay? Yeah, round things make flat. Good, good, good. Oh, so, so you see what I did? I stacked all the leaves together for my kale and now I'm going to roll it up. I'm gonna make a big old roll, like I'm making a burrito or something, okay? So I rolled it up. Now I've got my roll, okay? I'm gonna hold my roll with my fingers gripped so I don't hurt my beautiful fingers. And now I'm going to cut it like little ribbons, really tight, really tight little ribbons, okay? Really tight little ribbons. When I learned this trick, I was like, yay, I need to teach everyone in the world how to cut kale into tiny little ribbons. Yep, you just roll it up. Now, what I do also, because I want to make them a little smaller to fit in a spoon so that, you know, you don't pick up the spoon and you've got these long pieces um, splashing you, is I'm going to cut it this way as well. Remember, fingers out of the way, fingers out of the way. Good. If you guys are having fun, put fun in the chat. If you guys are having a good time, if you're having fun, please put fun in the chat. Please put fun in the chat. Good, 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 good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. We've got a lot of flats and a lot of funs. Good. Very, very good. I love it. I love it. Okay. Kale in the soup it goes. It's going to be a nice thick soup. And because I have the lentils, yes, I did soak them so that they absorbed some of the moisture. Um, I'm going to put, let me see if I need a little bit more liquid in here. See if I need a little bit more liquid than I do. Need a little more liquid here. Let me get some liquid. I'm going to put one cup. That's reverse osmosis water, just so you know why it's a separate or filtered water is good because remember, you never drink alone. You never drink alone. Now, this because it doesn't have meat in it and I'm doing it on the stove top, induction top, whatever you wanna call it, is gonna to have to cook for about 30 minutes. It might be completely done by the time our time is up and it might not be. So I want it to cook a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna put the lid on it, but I'm going to cock it to the side just a little. So there's a little air that comes through so it doesn't, it's not going to bubble over because this is cast iron and it's heavy, but I don't want it to. So I'm just going to cock it just a little bit. I'm going to turn the heat to a simmer. Actually, I'm going to turn it up so it comes to a boil first. 
and then I'll turn it down to a simmer as soon as that happens. Okay, so you know what, let's do this. I'm gonna cock it a little more so that I can see if it, when it comes to a boil and then I'll turn it down. Okay, all right. Now, any questions on the soup? Any questions on the soup? Hopefully we'll, I'll be able to serve some of it and show you, I'll be able to plate it for you. Good. You wanna eat soup now? Yes, good. Hopefully it's cancer fighting vegetable soup full of vegetables that are amazing for you, for your body. All right, you guys ready for some cookies? You ready to learn how to make amazing gluten-free pumpkin delight cookies? If you want me to teach you how to make these wonderful cookies, put cookies in that chat, put cookies in that chat. Let me see some cookies. I got a please from April, it's adorable. Of course, of course, I'm going to show you how to make cookies, please, because you said please, because you said please. Okay, so I don't have to clean that. I'm just going to do that for now. Okay, and let's make some cookies, please. Now, well, I got some more cookies, good. I cook, I bake, everything is gluten-free. Does anyone have a clue why I am gluten-free and why every, yeah. Does anybody know, is anybody here gluten-free? If you are gluten-free, put a one. If you're not gluten-free, put a zero. If you're gluten-free, put a one. If, you, if you're not, put a zero. And if you want to know why I prefer gluten-free, let me know, like put a why in the chat. Why is gluten-free healthier for you? Why do we wanna go gluten-free? Um, put a Y in the chat and I can talk to you about that, but I don't want to talk to you about it if, I, if I'm, you know, ad nauseum and it's not something that you're interested in, okay? Um, I want to make sure. Okay, so I have one person who wants to know why, one person who wants to know why. Anybody else? Sure. She goes, sure, why? I always think when people go, sure, like, yeah, they're just kind of not too sure that they want to know why, but they want to know why, right? So let me tell you. When you combine flour with a little bit of water. We did this in grammar school. What do you get when you mix flour and water? What do you, what do you get when you mix flour and water? So type it in the chat. What do you get when you mix flour and water together? Anybody else? Yeah, you get a little bit of paste, right? When flour is very highly, processed, I, not very highly, it's highly processed, as well as bleached, okay? And when you mix, you get paste, when you mix flour and water, when you mix, when you, um, flour and water, you make a paste. When you make bread, and then you eat it with your saliva, it makes paste in your gut, it makes paste in your stomach, okay? Because it's got the gluten, the it's got gluten in it, right? Coconut, by the way, coconut flour always has little um, lumps, so I like to sift coconut flour all the time. I always like to sift my coconut flour, and your baking soda always likes to be sifted as well. I always keep my baking soda in a glass jar, and I always keep the measuring spoon right in there, so I don't have to go fishing around for measuring spoons. We're gonna do a whole teaspoon, but that's an eighth. No, that's a quarter. I need a whole teaspoon in there. There you go. So when you eat this bread, pasta, any cookies, cakes, candy, anything that's made with white flour, even if it's whole wheat flour, it's still very highly processed. It still makes paste. It might be as not as thick of a paste, but it's still paste. Um, in your small intestines, inside the tube, which by the way are 21 feet long and about an inch and a half, it's an inch and a half in diameter. Inside you have these villi. They're like tentacle-like structures, longer ones and shorter ones that literally fly around like so. They don't fly, they, 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 they're tentacles. So when you eat your food, these tentacles absorb all of the vitamins and the nutrients and bring it right to the blood vessels, which sit on the outside of that intestinal wall. So, and then from the blood vessels, of course, it takes it throughout your whole body and brings all of the nutrition through your whole body. Now, when you eat gluten, remember I said it's like glue, it goes through the intestines like glue it breaks off 
these tentacles and it also starts to permeate the cell wall over time of the intestines. Nowadays, a lot of children are going getting celiac and the same thing is happening to them. The gluten is permeating the cell wall and it goes into the interstitial fluid that the, the lymphatic system has to work over, over, over time to mop up all the toxic waste and it can't mop it all up. So a lot of that toxic waste gets to our brain, it gets to other organs and it really disrupts our bodies and causes lack of energy, causes constipation, causes so many different issues. For me, it's brain. It's a lot of brain issues when I touch gluten, when I eat gluten. And so are you kind of getting it so far? Are you getting, it's called auto intoxication. Otherwise, some people know it as leaky gut syndrome, leaky gut syndrome, auto intoxication. If you're getting this, if it's resonating with you, say, get it, getting it in the chat or get it in the chat or got it or something. You're ho so happy you can smell the soup or cookies. I'm starving and don't think it'll help. Okay, good. What type of gluten-free flour do you recommend? I've tried almond and it is a bit challenging for me. Okay, Crystal. Thank you, everyone. Crystal, um, I use almond flour. That's what's in here. Almond flour as well as coconut flour. You never substitute a, a recipe that calls for white flour for almond flour. You have to use a specific recipe for the almond flour. In these cookies, I have uh, the combination almond flour, coconut flour, other recipes I make with tapioca flour in there, sometimes flaxseed flour, sometimes chia seed flour. Uh, so yeah, so those are the flowers that I use and it can be challenging if you use the wrong recipe. If you're like, oh, I'm trying to convert, don't. Get a recipe that's specific for the almond flour, coconut flour. Now there is a gluten-free flour that I bought the other day and I made, I, I was dying for salted oats. And hold on a second, let me get it out of my fridge for you so I can show it to you because you're asking. Oh, by the way, I keep all of my flowers in the fridge, almond flour, coconut flowers, gluten-free flowers. This is from Bob's Red Mill and it made the cookies beautiful. I asked my husband. It's, uh, this one is a combination of, let's see what he uses in here. I just don't remember. Sweet uh, white rice flour, whole grain brown rice flour, potato starch, whole grain sorghum flour, tapioca flour, and a little santhium gum. So this one, really nice for baking cookies. If you want to do a, um, a grain or rice flour. Okay. So that's a really nice one. Otherwise find the recipes that are for almond flour and uh, coconut flour and tapioca flour and the such. Okay. Bob's red mill. I hope that answers your question. Uh, Crystal, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. So when you're making, when you're baking dry ingredients in one, wet ingredients in the other. So let me see if I got all of the dry ingredients. I'm missing a little bit of sea salt. Okay, there we go. Mix those all up, put this aside for a moment. I'm gonna move my vegetables out of the way. And now we're gonna mix our wet ingredients. Our wet ingredients, I've, you can do a third of a cup of coconut oil or you can do butter. I've got some butter that's been sitting out. It's room temperature, so that's good to go. Next, we're gonna do some natural almond butter. You can use peanut butter too. Who would rather use almond butter or peanut butter? Put it in the chat. Are you almond butter or are you, would you rather peanut butter? Almond butter or peanut butter? I'm looking for something here. Give me a second. Ah, here it is, right under my eyes. Right under my eyes, okay. Depends on the recipe, but usually almond. Yeah, I like peanut butter too. And the, the problem with peanut butter, they put a lot of sugars in it. Some almond butters, they put a lot of sugars in it too. But if you're gonna get peanut butter, just make sure that it's organic and that the ingredients say peanuts, salt. And that's it, same thing with almond butter. Uh, Maybe no salt, it doesn't have to have salt in it, okay? Same thing with almond butter. It should say almonds, salt, period, nothing else. You don't need anything else in it. Now, here's the problem with these natural, I don't know if you can see it, um, natural nut butters. They have a lot of oil at the top and you can get your butter knife and use your muscles or you can use my trick, get your hand blender 
and blend it up or get a food processor and put it in your food processor and mix it in with the food processor. You know, I've tried just taking the oil off and using the oil and recipes and stuff, but then the, the nut butter becomes really hard and I don't like that. So I use this trick all the time, all the time. So I wanted to show you my handy dandy little trick. Here we go, it's almost done. Yeah, if you do it with a butter knife, it could take you up to 10 minutes to combine all of this. You know, I, I've even tried turning it upside down. That doesn't work. This is what works the best. Yeah, I just realized I didn't put an apron on. Then again, I've got my Halloween top on today. So yeah, so do not clean myself. All right, here we go. Put that over there. And we're gonna do six tablespoons of some luscious almond butter, some luscious almond butter. Now you do wanna turn the oven on to 350 degrees when you start baking so that it warms up. I forgot to do that, but there we go. Okay, count these out with me. That's two. Here's number three. Here's number four. Here's number five, I'm a little generous, aren't I? And here's number six. I could have done a quarter cup, which is four tablespoons plus two tablespoons, but why dirty another thing? It's enough. It's enough with everything that we get dirty in our kitchens as we're cooking along here. Okay, so that's the almond butter. What else do we have next? Six tablespoons. I'm missing something. Oh, sugar. We're going to do this on natural sugars. Okay. So let me talk to you about sugars and some sugar options. The recipe calls for some either coconut sugar or some monk fruit or some erythritol. If you have any problems with dis-ease, if you have any kind of problems with sugar, um, diabetes, insulin resistance, and you really even want to stay away from the coconut sugar. Okay. But this is a really nice brand of coconut sugar. It's called Big Tree Farms. I found it at, uh, in New Jersey and it's got vanilla flavoring already in it. And that one's really nice. The other thing for baking, I really love to bake with monk fruit and the confectioner's sugar of monk fruit. Monk fruit is from a fruit. It's not developed in a laboratory. Yes, it is processed, but not highly processed and it's not a chemical. It's from a fruit that is naturally sweet that does not elevate our blood sugar. Who here has used monk fruit in the past? Put monk fruit in the chat if you have used monk fruit in the past. If you've used monk fruit in the past, not stevia. I don't like to bake with stevia. Um, now here's another one. This is what we're gonna use today. It's Swerve, which is erythritol. Does this have, let me see if it has stevia in it as well. Nope, no stevia. This just has um, erythritol. Erythritol is a sugar alcohol that could cause some digestive upset in some people. It doesn't do it for me, but if you have any kind of digestive issues, you might wanna stay away from erythritol. Erythritol is what's in uh, Truvia. If you know the, the, the brand of sweetener Truvia, that's what's in there. And this one's brown sugar. This one's a brown sugar alternative. And I find it a little on the sweet side. So I am, all, it says calls for two thirds of a cup of sweetener. I am only going to put a half a cup because that's all I want. And, you know, use what you're inspired to use. Use what you are inspired to use, not necessarily what the recipe calls for, but you don't want to alter the recipe too much. I had a conversation with my sister about everything is pumpkin and it's all pumpkin spice. There's no real pumpkin in it. I made these cookies without real pumpkin in it. And uh, I decided I had some pumpkin left over from another recipe to put a couple of tablespoons of some pumpkin, pumpkin puree. Again, organic, BPA free. It even so this one even says, has a little label, it says BPA free. You don't want the BPA. What this did, adding the pumpkin made the cookie a little moister. And I had to cook it instead of 11 minutes, 15 minutes. Okay, so I'll cook those for 15 minutes. Okay, ooh, the soup is coming up, nice. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit because it's boiling, which is perfectly fine. 
And what are we missing here? What are we missing? I've got vanilla extract and an egg. Okay. Vanilla extract. Again, I've got this wonderful organic vanilla extract that is delicious. I'm going to put, you can put a tablespoon, you can put a little bit more, a little less. I'm putting, the recipe calls for one and a half, but because I have the extra moisture from the pumpkin, I'm putting a little less of the vanilla, but it's a really good vanilla, so it'll pow in flavor, okay? It'll pow in flavor. And if you want, you could even, you don't have to do vanilla. You can do maple extract. Maple extract would be lovely, 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 lovely in this recipe. Okay, I'm going to mix this together with my hand mixer. And then once I mix the sugar with everything else, the butter, then I'll put the egg in there. Okay, then I'll put the egg in there. Let me do this first. The brown sugar gave me a couple of lumps, gave me a little bit of a hard time. Make your egg room temperature, otherwise it'll seize the butter and it'll make it cold and it won't blend nicely. So keep your egg out for a couple of hours or at least an hour, okay? Okay, now I've got all the wet stuff in there. We're gonna put the dry in little at a time, a little at a time, okay? Hey, you're wondering, are we gonna have enough time to finish everything? And I wanna see the soup. Yes, I will show you the soup. Yes, we will have time for everything, for everything. I promise, because I've already baked the cookies, right? I've already baked them. And I want you to know a couple of things. I don't want you to go yet. Um, Caitlin is going to put in the chat a link to my Joyful Gut Reboot Guide. I hope you can hear me over the blender, okay? My Joyful Gut Reboot Guide is a book, an ebook that I wrote for you. And it talks all about the secrets, not even secrets, they're not secrets. It's all the fundamentals of having a joyful gut. Now, when you open the book, there is a free gift in there for you. And that is a finally thin forever breakthrough session with me. That's $350 value. And if you wanna have a breakthrough session with me for weight loss or just for your health in general, then go ahead and take advantage of that. Matter of fact, if you just want the breakthrough and you don't want the book, uh, Caitlin, put in that the, the link to the breakthrough session, which is just tinamcdermott.com slash breakthrough, and you can have that breakthrough session. Now, this is all blended, but what is missing but the chocolate chips, right? What's missing but the chocolate chips. Now, I've made these before, and I've made them with the bigger chocolate chips, and I decided I don't like the bigger chocolate chips in this cookie. I really like the little mini morsels. So I put about a cup of mini morsels in here and you always fold them in at the end. You fold them in at the end. And if you wanna put more, you put more. If you wanna put less, you put less. We're gonna scoop these out onto our cookie tray. And I want you to know, I always, bake and cook on stoneware. I love the way that stoneware bakes. It bakes evenly, it bakes crisply. And I'll use this for fish, I'll use this for cookies. It cleans up beautifully. It, can, it doesn't absorb any flavors, it's wonderful. Now, you see what I'm using? A cookie scoop, the best invention ever when it comes to making cookies. I love cookie scoops. It makes everything evenly. All the cookies are even. They'll all cook or they'll all bake evenly. And there we have it. Our soup is almost done. It probably needs to cook for another 10 minutes, but I will scoop it out for you. While I'm putting the finishing touches on everything here, I would love to know, I would love, love, love to know, and you've been a wonderful audience. I just love cooking for you today. But what have you found most valuable about our time together today? What have you found most valuable about our time together today? What is that one or two things that inspired you or lifted you up or you learned from our time together today? Okay, Google, 15 minute timer. Okay, 
There we go. Yeah, so I'd love to know. Healthy food is delicious, interesting food facts. Oh, good. Very, very, very good. Interesting food facts. Good. I like that. I like that. Okay, we're going to dish out some soup for you. I'm going to show you our soup. And then I will show you the cooked, the baked, the, fin the finished product of the cookies. Okay, I will show you the cookies. Um, food facts. Yeah, anything else that you have found most valuable about our time together today? What have you found most valuable about our time together today? Now, my sister loves broth. I love broth. So I'll probably, it's a little full right now, but towards the end, I'm going to add a little bit more broth to it. And you want to test it for its doneness, right? You want those vegetables to be fork tender. Fork tender, most of them are, the broccoli is not. So I'm gonna let this cook for another 10 minutes, but I wanted you to see it in a plate. Can you imagine putting a little bit of fresh parsley, detoxing the liver, phenomenal for you. Some fresh Parmesan cheese, I'll drizzle a little olive oil on top and a little bit of sea salt on the top. A little bit of sea salt on the top. And there we have that. Next, I'm going to serve up a cookie for you. Let me look for my tray. Oh, here we go. I'll just show them on my cookie rack, which I couldn't find the name of the cookie rack before. Um, but here we have it. These are the del delightful pumpkin delight cookies that I made earlier. Here we have it. And they are delicious. And if you're making them with the erythritol, the, the swerve, the monk fruit, there's not much guilt going on here. You just don't want to eat four or five of them. Have one as a treat. Treat your friends, treat your neighbors, treat your, your family. Family first, I think. And put them in little baggies and give them out to everybody and say, I love you. And here's a wonderful, healthy, healthy holiday treat for you and your loved ones. So there we have it, our cancer-fighting vegetarian soup with lentils and our wonderful pumpkin delight cookies. There we have it. Okay, the prepping. Okay, you enjoyed learning the prepping instruction, instructions. Very good, very good. I wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you for being here for today, today, for all of your wonderful interaction. I just love when people interact. And it feels like you're here with me in my kitchen. And that is just brings joy to my heart. So thank you for being here. And until next time, until next time, namaste, namaste. Bye for now, everyone. Bye for now. Have an amazing day.